In the poem Badger by John Clare, one of the major themes is man versus nature. The poem describes a badger being hunted through the woods by men. The badger represents nature, while the hunters represent humanity and its constant attempts to over con to control nature. The poem describes man's use of dogs and weaponry against the badger, as well as the badger's attempts to escape the men. The poem ends describing man taming the badger, and I believe that represents man conquering nature. Man's cruelty towards nature can be viewed as a pathetic appeal or pathos in this poem. Man's cruelty towards nature can be seen through the actions of hunting the badger, using dogs to hunt the badger, and forcing the dogs to fight the badger for the entertainment of the people of the town. Man is often depicted as the dominant animal, and because of that, I feel that we often abuse nature and manipulate it to suit our own needs. The fact that the badger fights back shows that nature will often resist man, but it is often futile because of the overwhelming power that man has in the modern world. The conflict of man versus nature is one that has been addressed constantly both in literature and the modern world. The logical appeal is that we are humans, and as humans, we are the dominant species. However, the pathetic appeal is that we are often cruel and abuse nature for our own personal gain. The abuse of nature can be seen through actions such as hunting for sport, the destruction of natural habitats, and the abuse and overuse of natural resources. As humans, we have to do what we can to survive, but I feel we often go too far in our attempts to control nature. In A Narrow Fellow in the Grass by Emily Dickinson, the narrator describes a snake moving quickly and quietly through a grass field. The narrator goes on to describe that while she loves and respects most creatures of nature, she has a distinct fear of snakes. Snakes are often depicted as dangerous or sinister creatures. However, I believe that they are just part of the natural world. The author's fear of snakes and the general view of snakes in the world can again relate to the conflict between man and nature. I believe the last two stanzas of the poem in which the narrator describes her love of nature and yet her fear of snakes can relate to man's fear of that which is unknown or different. I believe man fears what he doesn't understand because he feels threatened by his lack of knowledge, and fear often leads to hatred, as is the case with the snake. The last two stanzas of the poem describe man's connection with nature and man's fear of nature. Man will feel connected with the nature that he does understand, but he will fear the parts of nature that he cannot understand. I believe that one of the roots of man's conflict with nature is man's fear of nature. The logical appeal of this poem comes from man's connection with nature and the parts of nature that man has control over. The pathetic appeal comes from man's fear of nature and the fear of the parts of nature that man cannot control. 
The conflict of man versus nature often depicts man conquering nature. However, in the case of this poem, man cannot conquer nature because of a certain fear of part of nature. This fear comes from the fear of the unknown. The snake is unseen and unheard until it is upon the narrator, and thus it is unknown until the narrator is forced to deal with it. Fear can often prevent us from accomplishing certain tasks, and in the case with this poem, fear prevents us from conquering nature. In the poem The Porcupine by Galway Cannell, the narrator describes the resemblance between humans and porcupines. This resemblance is not a physical resemblance, but a habitual resemblance. We share many characteristics with porcupines. These characteristics show the connection between man and nature. The narrator also describes the nature and finality of death and man's attempts to conquer or outrun death. Death being a part of nature, this poem deals with the conflict between man and nature once again. The fourth stanza of the poem discusses the death of a porcupine at the hands of a farmer. The death comes unexpectedly for the porcupine, and in its final moments it attempts to run from death. As the porcupine represents man, a comparison can be drawn to the uncertainty and the finality of death. A comparison can also be drawn to man's attempts to escape death by all means possible. Death can occur at any time, and one must understand that death is a part of nature. When man attempts to cheat death, he is attempting to conquer nature, a part of nature that he cannot fully understand. Attempts to cheat death often only postpone the inevitability of it. The fifth stanza states that the Avesta, the sacred text of Zoroastrianism, puts porcupine killers into hell for nine generations. A comparison can be drawn to the immorality of murder and also to man's reliance on religion to determine the morality of certain actions. The fifth stanza states that the Avesta, the sacred text of Zoroastrianism, puts porcupine killers into hell for nine generations. A comparison can be drawn to the immorality of murder and also to man's reliance on religion to determine the morality of certain actions. The sixth stanza once again compares the life of the porcupine to the life of man. The struggles, the fear, and the inevitable death can again show the connection between man and nature.